Today we're speaking with Alex Wardell, director of Kyoto America, a Japanese automation company. Hi, Alex. How are you today? Great. Thank you, Lindsay. Thanks so much for joining the discussion. So for any listeners who might not be aware of Kyoto America, can you give them a brief introduction? Sure. Kyoto America is the U.S. office of Kyoto Japan, a Japanese manufacturing company. We specialize in high technology assembly automation and packaging machines, specifically for the pharmaceutical industry. Although we have a number of customers here in America, the highest concentration of clients we have is in the Japanese pharmaceutical market. I do hear that Kyoto America will exhibit a syringe assembly machine this year at Interfax in New York. I'd like to focus on one unique aspect of this machine, also known as a plunger rod insertion and labeling machine. Can you please tell our listeners a little bit more about this one specific feature? Certainly. Several years ago, Kyoto developed a proprietary uh, torque control system that monitors in real time the threading of a plunger rod into a stoppered pre-filled syringe. As the rod threads into the stopper, the amount of torque required to continue this threading process increases. A servo motor monitors the torque in real time and halts the threading process at the very moment that the rod fully seats into the stopper. There's a specialized calibration technique that's used to ensure the monitored electro torque matches the actual mechanical torque that's applied in the system. We can easily determine if a stopper's been displaced or spins inside the syringe because the measured electro torque must follow a predicted torque profile. This can be plotted in chart form, having time in milliseconds on the x-axis and applied torque on the y-axis. For example, if the measured torque de decreases rapidly before the allotted cycle time is achieved, we know the stopper must have spun inside the syringe and that syringe can be flagged for rejection. The torque used to thread any given syringe is controlled independently of all the other syringes. Every single syringe in production is monitored using the process. And speeds up to about 200 parts per minute can be achieved in a production environment. Vision systems are also employed as a secondary uh, confirmation. For example, one vision system focuses in on the rod stopper gap area, and we can detect and reject syringes that show about 100 microns of gap or greater between the rod and the stopper. The system's all even validated for use within America, and machinery with this system employed are already operating in production environments. Well, that certainly sounds technical and revolutionary. It, it is. We're not aware of any other machine in the market that currently employs this level of monitoring to the specific process. What is your competition doing uh, that it makes uh, you stand out from them? Our competitors take a different approach. And I, uh, of course, I don't want to speak to their uh, capabilities. There's a lot of very good equipment automation suppliers, in the, especially in the high-end pharmaceutical market. But each has a different approach. And our approach focuses on specific and direct control of the process. Uh, with handling each uh, specific syringe uh, one by one, and, and that gives us the ability to have unique control of any given syringe for that specific moment in time. Okay, okay, so it's much more individualized. Correct. How do you see this kind of changing the way pharmaceuticals are manufactured? The limitation of this system is it cannot be employed at high speed. So if a machine is to operate, for example, at uh, 600 per minute, this type of system is just not enough time to apply in this particular system. So only within a specific production window of, mm -hmm. say, for example, uh, 50 parts per minute up to 200 parts per minute can you have this kind of control over the process. Uh, so everything depends on the customer's requirement. Uh, ultimately, you, the more time you have to uh, assemble any given device, the more accurate and the more control systems you can employ in the process. Mm -hmm. But of course, uh, we understand customers have high production demands, and we need to increase the speed of the machinery accordingly. Do you know what the inspiration was behind this? What made you slow it down so you could manipulate it? We developed this system specifically uh, originating in the Japanese pharmaceutical market. And the reason why it came about is the Japanese regulations and customers are notoriously uh, detail-oriented mm -hmm. when it comes to the finished products. They're very particular about uh, the finishing, scratches, defects. Of course, everybody is uh, to some degree, but the Japanese set the bar the highest in the world. So. We're very, we have many customers and we're very comfortable working to that uh, high bar that they set. 
And in this particular case, when we first developed it, it was in partnership with a large Japanese pharma company meeting their requirements to have this level of uh, torque control in the process. Having this reassurance that the stopper has never uh, been moved during the sensitive process gave them uh, some additional reassurance as to the integrity of their product when they ship it out the door. Yoto America is one of the leading suppliers in the Japanese markets. They've got the attention to detail that's necessary um, you know, to keep all of the different um, clients uh, pleased with the equipment. That's all for me. Thank you for joining us, Alex. For more information on Kyoto America's product line, you may visit interfax.com or Kyoto America's website, kyotoamerica.com. For the Interfax blog, this is Lindsay Lipovich. Thank you for joining us.